Today, REITs are priced at their lowest valuations since the great financial crisis. Their share prices have dropped by nearly 40%, even as most REITs grew their cash flows by 5 to 10% since the beginning of 2022. As a result, valuations in the REIT sector are now about two times lower than just two years ago. And that's just the average of the sector. There are a lot of individual REITs that have dropped by closer to 50, 60, or even in the most extreme cases, 90%. That's not just a market correction. This is a real crash. And in fact, it's the worst one since 2008. And the interesting thing here is that every REIT has crashed without exceptions. Even the highest quality blue chips with strong investment grade rating balance sheets and rapid rapidly growing rents have seen their share prices drop to historically low levels. I think that this is a historic opportunity for those investors who can look past the short-term uncertainty and focus on the bigger picture. But which REITs are the best to buy today? Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about three specific REITs that I'm accumulating at the moment for my own portfolio. In case you want to access this portfolio, feel free to join my REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord, for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. And then finally, before I get started, could you please do me a huge favor and like this video? It really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support. So the first read that I want to discuss here is called Crown Castle, ticker symbol CCI. This is slowly becoming one of my largest read holdings. Crown Castle is a blue chip type read that typically trades at a high valuation and a low dividend yield because it owns a portfolio of cell towers that enjoy very resilient fundamentals and rapid rent growth. Then secondly, it has a strong investment grade rated balance sheet that limits the impact of rate hikes. And then finally, it has one of the strongest track records in the REIT sector, having massively outperformed sector averages, all while growing its dividend at a rapid pace. As a result, the market typically prices this REIT at about 25 times its cash flow and a low dividend yield of 3 to 4%. But today is the exception. Crown Castle has seen share price crash over the past year. It has dropped even more than the rest of the REIT sector. And as a result, it's now priced at a historically low valuation. It is now priced at just 12 times its cash flow and a near 7% dividend yield, which is the highest yield ever for this company. I think that this exceptionally low valuation is the result of two things. The first reason is pretty obvious. Crown Castle is structured as a REIT. The REIT sector has sold off. And so Crown Castle wasn't immune to that. But then the second thing that made this sell off even worse for Crown Castle is that it's expected to suffer a temporary slowdown in its growth in the coming years. This is because T-Mobile's recent acquisition of Sprint will lead to some lease cancellations through 2025. The management of Crown Castle has made it very clear that this temporary headwind is going to cause its growth rate to be below average in the coming few years. We agree with the market that this warrants a low evaluation, but we just think that it has overreacted here. Crown Castle is now priced as if its growth story was over forever. But in reality, we are just talking here about two years. We've talked to the management team and they've told us that beyond 2025, they are very confident that they can return to a 7 to 8% dividend growth rate in the future. By the way, if you want to access all our management interviews, you can read them at Hired Landlord with a two week free trial. There's a link in the description of this video. So in short, I think that this is a once in a decade opportunity to buy a blue chip like Crown Castle at its lowest valuation ever because of a temporary crisis. We are con confident that its growth will re-accelerate again and as this happens I think that it will serve as a strong catalyst to reprice the stock at a higher valuation. And the great thing here is that Crown Castle has gotten so cheap that even if its share price only recovers halfway of its previous peak that would unlock about 50% upside to shareholders. While you wait you will also earn a near 7% dividend yield and as its growth re-accelerates to 7 to 8% per year you'll be earning roughly 15% average annual total returns going forward. I think that it's hard to find better risk to reward in today's market. And for this reason, I've been aggressively accumulating more shares of Crown Castle. Then the second read that I want to discuss here is called WP Carry, ticker symbol WPC. This is another blue chip type read that has sold off very heavily and is now priced at one of its lowest valuations ever. It owns mainly industrial properties that enjoy CPI based rent adjustments, which are today resulting in rapid rent growth as a result of the high inflation. Then secondly, it also has a strong investment grade rated balance sheet that limits the impact of future rent hikes. And then finally, just like Crown Castle, WP Carry also has a multi-decade track record of very significant market outperformance. But despite all of this, its share price has crashed and as a result, it's today priced at just 10 times its cash flow. 
This low valuation multiple is especially surprising because most industrial REITs are today priced at over 20 times their cash flow even following the recent correction. To give you an example, Prologis, which is the biggest industrial REIT, is today priced at 21 times its cash flow. These industrial REITs tend to trade at these high multiples because the industrial properties are highly sought after as they benefit from the growth of e-commerce as well as the trend of onshoring. But so why is WP Carry priced at such a low valuation? Well, it seems that the market is failing to see it as an industrial REIT because historically, WP Carry has been a bit more diversified, owning also some retail properties as well as some office buildings. But it's important to note here that this is changing rapidly. Just recently, WP Carry announced it will spin off most of its office properties into a separate REIT and then the rest it will sell it and redeploy these proceeds mostly into industrial properties. Following these transactions, we estimate that the REIT will be generating about two-thirds of its cash flow from industrial properties, and then the remaining one-third will come from retail net lease properties, which are comparable to those of realty income. Think about a grocery store or home improvement store with a 10-year lease on it, a strong tenant. This is highly resilient stuff. I believe that this announcement that they will rapidly exit the office property market is very good. It will allow the REIT to rapidly get away from its worth assets, all while increasing its exposure to its best assets and overall this should reduce its risk profile all while increasing its future growth prospects. But despite that the market hates it because of one primary reason it's going to lead to a small dividend cut. The REIT will lose a bunch of its cash flow following the spin-off and while it could maintain the dividend it has decided to reduce it in order to be in a better position to self-fund its future growth. Its plan is to set up its payout ratio at around 70% which will leave around 30% of its cash flow to acquire more properties and become even closer to an industrial rate over time. Again, I think that this is a great plan because it means that in five years, WP Carry could be earning about three-fourths of its income from industrial properties. And as the REIT becomes a quasi-industrial REIT, I think that we will see its valuation multiple expand very significantly. Even if it grew from just 10 to 15 times, you could get 50% upside from today's level. And if it reaches as much as 20 times, that could mean a doubling of the share price. Again, as a reminder, most industrial REITs are today priced at 20 to 25 Five times FFO, so I don't think that these expectations is unreasonable at all. And while you wait for this upside, the dividend yield should still be around 7% even after the cut, which should help you stay patient. Unfortunately, I already owned some WP Carry prior to its recent crash, but now is an opportunity to buy even more shares while they are discounted. And then the third read that I want to discuss here is Camden Property Trust, ticker symbol CPT. If cell towers and industrial properties aren't your thing, perhaps you'll be more interested in apartment communities such as those owned by Camden Property Trust. This is one of the highest quality apartment REITs in the world. It owns a portfolio of mostly class B affordable communities in rapidly growing Sunbelt markets. It has one of the strongest balance sheets in the entire REIT sector with a low debt to EBITDA of around four times and an LTV of just around 30%. And then finally, just like the two previous REITs that we highlighted, it has one of the best track records in the REIT sector, having massively outperformed market averages over the long run. But all these great attributes didn't mean anything once the REIT market began to crash. Camden has seen share price cut nearly in half, even as it kept growing its rents at a rapid pace. And as a result, its valuation multiple is today about two times lower than just two years ago. Just to give you a sense of how cheap its valuation has become, it's today priced at an implied cap rate of around 7%. But its Sunbelt multifamily apartment communities today changed hands at closer to a 4.5 to 5% cap rate in the private market. Just recently, another apartment REIT called UDR announced it would acquire a portfolio of Sunbelt apartment communities that are quite comparable at the 4.5% cap rate. What this means is that Camden is today priced at a roughly 40% discount to its net asset value. Put differently, today you have an opportunity to buy equity in its properties at roughly 60 cents on the dollar. That's pretty extreme. Such valuation could make sense for a REIT that's distressed or highly leveraged, uh, suffering poor management. But in the case of Camden, this is really a blue chip and so this valuation makes little sense in my opinion. This is a REIT with an A-rated balance sheet and great long-term growth prospects. Its valuation has gotten so low that it appears to have recently even attracted the attention of Starwood, which is one of the biggest private equity firms in the world. 
Its leader, Barry Sternlitz, recently went on CNBC and said the following about the REIT market. By the way, when credit comes back, you're gonna see REITs take off. There are some unbelievable bargains in REITs. We did the same during the pandemic. We bought a dozen stocks all around the world and we had a 70% IRR on that stuff. We're already buying some stuff today in the public market. I think that this sums up the opportunity quite nicely. Even if you use some conservative assumptions here and assume that the net asset value of Camden will come down a bit as cap rates expand, you could still expect about 50% upside from today's low valuation. And while you wait, you also earn a 4% dividend yield, which may not seem high, but this is because the REIT is retaining most of its cash flow today to reinvest in its future growth. So these are three examples of REITs that I'm buying today, but there are many more. If you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio as well as my transactions in real time, feel free to join Hired Landlord, my REIT newsletter for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. And otherwise, finally, if you could do me a huge favor and like the video, that really helped me a lot to grow the channel. Make sure to also subscribe to not miss any future investment opportunities and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.